Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy and the Security Editions. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time, although next week we will not be having a weekly news roundup. I will be in the middle of camp, in the middle of absolutely nowhere, with no internet connections. I will not be able to check the news, let alone record a news show. We will have a few videos premiering that week, um, but not a lot else going on. We will be back the following week on still reduced hours due to a conference, but hey, it will at least be around the internet. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on into the news. First up, Google will delete location history for abortion clinic visits. Um, okay, here's the good things that came out of this Roe versus Wade overturning. Well, first and foremost, the overturning of the stupid thing and letting the states and the people decide what's best for them. And what I find it really funny. Was it the guitar? There was the lead vocalist, I think it was at Green Day. Like, this is so horrendous. I'm going to move to UK and get out of the United States. He lived in California. You can literally kill your child up to birth in California. And they're trying to push a law that they will not be investigating any deaths of children up to 28 days old. In California. In the United Kingdom, you're not allowed to have an abortion. <laughs> these, nothing makes sense in these people's heads. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But the other things we get, uh, the next fun thing we got out of the Roe versus Wade is a bunch of liberal people get together and say, we're going to get a legally binding contract together and we are not going to have sex unless these men will commit to staying with us and supporting us. Yeah, that's called marriage. That's what we've been telling you to do for a long time. Welcome to our side. And the third awesome thing we get out of the overturning of Roe versus Wade, for those of you who are left, people are starting to think about privacy because, yes, all these different apps can track your location services, and as they're tracking you around, they're like, wait, 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 they know when I'm going into abortion clinics? <gasps> I wonder if they're like, are they deleting more stuff? So it's like your location history has you going everywhere, but abortion clinics are this white dot. Like there's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. I wonder if that's the case or if they're deleting more things to make it not look like it's like, it's kind of like if you, uh, if you remember from, uh, if you remember, was it uh, the the second Star Wars, the, the the Attack of the Clones? I think, where he's looking at the star charts and the the he he talks to the chef. I don't know why this chef is aware of intergalactic situations, but he is. But uh, he tells him where this planet is, the Kamido planet. He's like, it should be right here. Tells him right where it is. He looks at the star charts. It's not in the star charts, but there's this hole right there that every indication says a planet should be there, but the thing is missing. Is that what Google's gonna look like? Hmm, something's missing here, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But if this is the thing that gets more people thinking about cell phone, smartphone privacy, if this is the thing that gets people thinking, ah, indeed I do have something to hide, awesome. We need more people thinking about these things. We need more people thinking about these things. And so this isn't the only one. There was uh, there were a number of uh, different tracking stories rather than including all of them uh, because I really don't want to talk about this issue any more than we have to. Um, this is the only one I decided to keep. There are other ones regarding license plate readers and, and a bunch of other things. But in this uh, situation here, basically they're saying we're going to delete the times where people had gone to various abortion clinics in the hopes to protect people's privacy. Good. I I'm okay with that. Um, that's good. And if this is what it takes to get people to start thinking about privacy and winning people over to the side of privacy, I'm all for it. And that is a good thing. All right. Next up. Um, of course, the other big guy, I promise the rest of the show is not going to be political, guys. But we've, of course, had another uh, Supreme Court ruling that uh, has half of the country celebrating and half of the country uh, writhing in fear and, uh, and uh, loathing. And um, right, right as this happens, California, which keeps a list not just of uh, carry, carry concealed permits, but also uh, carries a, a registration. California is one of the states that requires you register your firearms. Most states don't require you to do that, but they have this giant database of registered firearms, and it has fun things like your your race and your gender. Uh, and, and I did notice on the gender, they only have M and F. There is no unicorns. There is no furry people. There is uh, no Apache helicopters. They, they have M and they have F. I mean, come on, California. Get with the times. Get with the times here. Um, but they also had flags for law enforcement officers and they had full names and full addresses and carry status and they were declined. The reason why they were declined and all this stuff just whoops, leaked online. Oh, and here's the deal. Like, this is unacceptable. We're going to root out the problem. 
really the problem is like, hey, let's out all these guys. <laughs> But, you know, if uh, if you're stupid enough to start busting into houses of people who have firearms in California, it might be justified because in California, they're so crazy. If you break into somebody's house in the state of California, you are still not allowed to to defend yourself using lethal force unless they try you lethal force on you first. So once they have attempted to kill you, then you can shoot back. Maybe. Um, but that's what it is. But yeah, all this information leaked out. So this is a reason why we do not need registries. And I will remind you that the, uh, the firearm registries, the religious affiliation registries, these are the things that caused the mid uh, 1940s German soldiers, uh, to track down who all the people were that they would like to have, um, <clears throat> obliterated. So government databases are a bad thing, no matter what. Well, Meta is removing the uh, requirement to attach your Facebook account to your Oculus to play. Everyone's like, whoa, this is pretty cool. E yeah, they're just replacing it with the Meta account. So uh, they're no longer requiring the Facebook account. They're using the Oculus account. And I think it's by 2024, everyone's going to need to switch that to a Meta account. Oh, January, let's see. Uh, the district support for Oculus account slated January 1st, 2023. After that date, you'll have to create a new Meta account in order to continue playing. So I'll remind you, that the meta account this is like oh good no more facebook account yeah it's the meta account which means it's facebook and instagram and oculus and all of the meta data all in one place wow isn't that cool um so that happens to be uh that happens to be where we are at right there uh, so, uh, of course, that's going to uh, align with their their goals of unifying everything under the Meta account. In fact, I, I believe that now there's like a whole Meta business management page now as well uh, inside of there that I saw when I was had to I actually had to log into somebody's Facebook page to do something for one of my clients. If you know a social media manager that I can hire you to do it instead, please let me know. Um, anyway, um. Yeah, this is exciting. Um, so the uh, FBI now has a new FBI child app. Isn't that exciting? So this is directly from FBI.gov is where our URL is. This is the FBI child ID app. Get the app. Put your child safety in your own hands. <laughs> Uh, you're stopping at the mall with your children. One of them suddenly disappears. A quick search of the nearby area is unsuccessful. What do you do? Now there's a free new tool from the FBI that can help. Our child ID app and the first mobile application created by the FBI provides a convenient place to electronically store photos and their vital information about your children. So it's literally right at your hands if you need it. You can show the pictures and provide physical identifiers such as the height and weight to security or police officers on the spot. Using a special tab on the app, you can also quickly and easily email the information to the authorities within, with a few clicks. The app includes tips on keeping children safe, as well as specific guidance on what to do in the first few critical hours after a child goes missing. It features a password protection option to keep your information safe and allows you to add pictures from your mobile phone's image library. You can also zoom in and crop images prior to saving. The app is available for download through iTunes and the Android phones to the Google Play Store. And they do give us this important note down here. The FBI is not collecting or storing any photos or information that you enter in the app all the Data resides solely on your mobile device unless you need to send it to the authorities. Please read your mobile's terms of service for information about the security of applications stored on your device. <laughs> um, if you believe the FBI is not um, uh, collecting and storing your information, I happen to have some oceanfront property in Montana to sell you. Uh, so let's head on over to the Play Store and let's have a gander at uh, this guy here. Now, this is a very interestingly curious app here because it says no data is shared with third parties. It says no data is collected. And it says the data is encrypted in transit. <laughs> data can't be deleted. <laughs> hmm. The developer says, the developer says, not we've independently verified, the developer says the app doesn't collect or share any user data. No data is shared with third parties, says the app doesn't, uh, the developer says the app doesn't share data with other companies or organizations. Uh, the developer says the app doesn't collect user data. Your data is transferred over a secure connection and your data can't be deleted. 
Uh, the developer doesn't provide a way for you to request that your data be deleted. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I think I'll put every, I'll put my whole neighborhood's children in that thing. All right, and now on to our feature story in privacy. This company comes out of stealth mode with $19 million of seed funding from Target Global, Square Peg. Wow. Schusterman Family Investments, Caden Capital, and Operator Partners, their task is to analyze data to predict a customer's lifetime value. Talk about the idea here of, all right, we talk about companies don't see us as people, they see us as profit centers. We're widgets to be bought and sold and traded for. Now they're literally saying the quiet part out loud. What is this? What is this blob of carbon and hydrogen financially worth to us? That's all we really want to know. I, what, what about his life or his, I, It doesn't matter. Just, just kill him. I don't care. You know, I mean, and the medical industry, they, they, you understand this? The medical industry makes money when you're sick. They don't make money when you're well. Uh, maybe I avoid doctors for that reason alone. Anyway, um, back to this. Uh, the. Uh, they founded the Voyager, uh, Vo Voyantis, excuse me, I'm going to keep saying Voyager, it's Voyantis, in 2020, motivated by the idea that many companies today base growth and marketing decisions on spreadsheets. So Weisenberg claims traditional methods were making it difficult to both analyze and utilize company-owned data to make informed, time-sensitive decisions and activate growth. He told TechCrunch in an email, these days, as all companies are making the shift to get onto the path to profitability, it is crucial to understand and act on the future value of each user. Hmm, that's exciting. Weisenberg provided uh, previously co-launched over-the-top tech provider Vinci and Frito Communication, a digital marketing boutique. Frider was one of the founding members of a dance, a platform for publishers that used AI to profile smartphone users. Sounds awesome. Um, he doesn't posit this can predict the future, but he says the platform, by applying machine learning algorithms to thousands of data points, can project a user's future propensity and lifetime value shortly after acquisition and throughout their journey. <laughs> Great. When applied to ad campaigns, he says these predictions can be used by marketing teams to make campaign decisions or, fee or fed as signals into ad networks and marketing automation platforms such as all the evil guys. Uh, we build continuous flurry of models to predict the lifetime value at different levels of maturity in the customer's lifetime for a myriad of business use cases. I, like Nothing makes me feel loved like... The company buying in and saying, how much bottom line profit are you worth, you pleb? Would you mind just opening your wallet and handing it over? Just just turn it all on. I mean, really, guys, that's kind of what's going on here. And so, yeah, with uh, this being said, I mean, eh, who else is excited about this? Let me know if you're excited about this stuff in the comments down below. Well, we uh, use affiliates to keep the channel going. Today we are highlighting Mint Mobile. I'm using this for my phone. I absolutely love it. I'm paying $180 per year for my phone. That comes with four gigs of data. Uh, and I'm actually thinking about upping it a little bit just to use my phone as some hotspot as uh, bleed over internet should I need it um, because they do allow me to use my hotspot unrestricted as long as I don't go over my, my data limit. So you can use my affiliate code there, tlm.li forward slash mm, and uh, you can head on down here and look at what plan might be best for you. They do use T-Mobile Tower, so if T-Mobile is available in your area, Mint Mobile will work great for you. I'm using the 4 gig plan. They have a 10, a 15, and the unlimited, which is 35 gigabytes of data, which is $30 a month. Um, so $30 a month is uh, basically you pay for at least three months at a time. And the more you pay up front, the cheaper it gets. And so if you do the new customer, it's $30 per month for 90. Uh, when you break it down, it's $40. So $120 for three months of service to 10 for six months of service or $360 for 12 months of service for 35 gigabytes a month. And they do not restrict your hotspot on your phone.
So have a look over there, tlm.li forward slash Mint Mobile to try out Mint Mobile today. Now let's head on to security news. First up in security news, Marriott is hacked again. It would appear as a single Marriott, Marriott BWI Airport, that's in Maryland. Uh, hackers got in there, they were able to get 20 gigabytes of data, and then they communicated with the hotel, I think posing as like Red Hat's um, security guys. <laughs> They eventually stopped communicating, but it was verified that they had real data. They didn't get a lot of customer data. They only got a few hundred customer data. A lot of what they got, though, is internal documents, um, uh, procedures, um, basically stuff like how to do this or that on the shift. They also got the employee, um, the employee um, manifests and uh, all of the pay rates and things. So the accounting software for the employee and so... Customer um, competitors would be really interested in that type of stuff simply because they could get in there and see what they're charging or what they're paying their employees versus other people as well. So more data breaches, 20 gigabytes worth. So that's exciting. And basically it's a hacking group that nobody knows exactly who they are. So that's also fun when we have anonymous hacking groups. Probably those, uh, those teenagers in UK again. Well, verified Twitter accounts are are phishing users with hate speech warnings because, of course, if you simply go onto Twitter and say, uh, no, you're not a female, you're a male, I don't care what your pronouns say in your thing, well, that's bannable hate speech. And, um, you know, all that kind of stuff is happening. So basically, Twitter will ban you if for any reason that they really want and simply call it hate speech because it's a it's a, a collect all for everything. And so what these guys are doing is they're DMing people into a message and it says, hey, your account has been flagged as inauthentic and unsafe by our automated system spreading hate speeches against our terms of service. We at Twitter take security on the platform seriously. That's why we are suspending your account in 48 hours. If you do not complete the authentication process to authenticate, click the link below. Of course, you click on the phishing link below, and then you end up giving a whole lot of authentication data to some scammer. Yay! Isn't that totally awesome? So be aware of that if you get one of those in your uh, DM feed. Um, you know, play with it. <laughs> Have fun with them. Load into that bad boy and start giving them all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> I'd give you some suggestions but now this is a family friendly show and our last story is orbit a new undetected linux threat that uses a unique hijack of execution flow the article here did not specify how this is infects the system so i'm not sure how they get into the system the first time but it keeps itself persistent by attaching itself in parts to several critical system structures basically by adding some uh, adding some commands into the configuration and the run files for several critical functions. The basic way to hunt it down is to look for, where's it at? Uh, maps. Where's it at? It was fairly easy to spot. It goes into a random folder but it drops a file of a very specific format and type. And so you can parrot it out by doing a system-wide search for that. It's going to keep itself persistent by loading itself into multiple different ways into the system. And then once it's in there, they did describe what it does once it gets in here. It opens up a backdoor, an SSH portal, and a few other functions that allows the malicious actor to get in the back door of your system and do anything that they would like as an administrator. So seeing what you're doing, copying log files, infecting your system with other things. And so um, that's what to look out for. From what I gather, this is primarily impacting servers, but um, it's just something to keep an eye on. I, I wish I could find that spot where it is. It uses a, it uses .so files to work. Maybe I maybe I was reading a few different articles and I didn't grab the one which had the specific files that were being used. But just be aware there is some more Linux malware coming out there that's opening up entire backdoors and Trojans into Linux servers via SSH. Well, if you'd like to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M, if you'd like to help support us on over there. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching.
to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.